Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome to the Three Gun Show, episode 70. I'm your host, Dave Hartman. This week, my guest is Dissident Arms co-owner and shooter, Mike Whitesides. This episode is brought to you by MGM Targets. The common theme through Mike's interview here is the drive to practice hard and to put on high-level matches. To do all that, you need decent targets. Trust me, I've built a bunch of targets that were junk and didn't last, and, uh, and you know, if I just bought the, the good stuff the first time right off the bat, I'd have been miles ahead and would have actually saved money. MGM Targets makes high quality targets and it is the same target that you will shoot at a major match. My favorite target lately has been the standard shape auto poppers. Those little things are challenging for pistol, shotgun, or rifle. And because they automatically reset, you can run more drills and drills with positional work without bothering to break for a reset. Step up your practice or outfit your range and use the code DHMGM10 to save 10% on your purchase. MGM Targets is putting up some great prizes to give away to you over the next few months. April's giveaway is for an MGM Switch View lover. This little guy will help you quickly adjust magnification on your scope, which is important when transitioning from short to long range targets. For details and how to enter, Go to 3gunshow.com slash MGM. In this episode, Mike and I discuss how to be self-aware and model the habits of top shooters, how to take charge of your own progress in the sport and create top-level matches, and you'll learn why becoming a near one-for-one guy or gal on slugs and a near one-for-one guy or gal (laughs) on long range will change your three-gun game. Links to everything we discuss in this episode, including my favorite MGM target, can be found at 3gunshow.com slash episode 70. Or you can just tap the album art on your smartphone and it will take you right there. And now please join me in welcoming to the show, co-owner and shooter at Dissident Arms, Mike Whitesides. Mike, welcome to the show. Hey Dave, good to be here. How's it going? Uh, it's going awesome, man. I'm, uh, I'm pumped to talk to you here because uh, you know you and I met at the uh, Noveski Multigun Championship uh, last year, 2015. And uh, it turns out we shot at the Pikes Peak Shotgun Challenge in uh, 2015 as well, but uh, we didn't know each other at the time. And I don't remember seeing you. You don't remember seeing me. So the only thing we have to show is like our results for that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was uh, actually made two trips out to Colorado last year. Um, both of them were, were pretty rough trips uh, as on a shooting level, but I was happy to experience the matches and, uh, and you know, um, meet a lot of new guys and, and sh- uh, shoot some of uh, Mark's mat, uh, Mark's matches and, uh, and, uh, and, you know, basically did a lot of traveling last year and, and, and each match is I've learned a whole lot from each one. Well, that's awesome. And we're going to dive deep into that. And, uh, when you and I spoke a couple of days ago, you were talking about your, you know, match performance in 2015 and some tweaks you've made. And I'd love to talk about that. Uh, before we get started real quick here, why don't you give us an, uh, an idea of who you are off the range? Uh, well, I, um, I would say my, my day job is, uh, is I, I photograph high end real estate. Um, it's not all high end, but most of it is, is up there. I've been doing it for, um, for almost 15 years now. Uh, it's given me the, um, the time and, 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 you know, the money to, to expand what I do as far as like being able to to have a hobbies and, and do other things and, um, and businesses. And so, um, it's, it, it, it's been, it's been good to me on, on that level. And, and once I found the, uh, the hobby that I really enjoy a lot, it's, uh, I've been able to afford the extra time, you know, to be able to do the kind that kind of shooting. And, um, you know, off the last three years, I really haven't spent much time off the range, uh, <laughs> honestly. Uh, so pretty much any of my extra time, uh, that's pretty much been dedicated towards that. Um, um, but as far as not actually shooting, um, uh, my business partner, Lan Wynn and I, we run a, a company, Dissonant Arms. Uh, we also run a local three gun nation, multi-gun, uh, series, uh, known as Dissonant Arms Multi-Gun. And, um, and then, um, uh, you know, between those, those things, I pretty much, uh, pretty much all my time's taken up. 
Yeah, no kidding. So where where did this love of uh, competition shooting come from for you then? Well, um, it, it, Dissident Arms started, you know, about a year before we got into three gun or really knew much about three gun. So um, we were, uh, whenever I say we, it's my business partner, Land Wynn and I, uh, we were basically just dudes on the couch and um, we started kind of like, sh- sh- you know, plinking at ranges and hanging out at a local gun store and getting into uh, getting into firearms a little bit. And we had seen three gun nation, I think on TV, probably the season one, um, you know, a few times and, uh, and we're, uh, we're doing some, um, uh, you know, a little bit of tinkering around with guns ourselves. And so I had uh, wanted to buy a Sega shotgun. Um, it was back whenever everybody, uh, I was doing the zombie craze with all the shotguns. And, uh, and so I bought a, uh, a stock Sega shotgun and took it to a local gunsmith. And, uh, and, um, you know, he told me, took a big deposit, told me six weeks, he'd have my shotgun, no matter what, you know, no, no problem, no matter what, and, you know, at six months that we were, I was having to threaten to sue him to get my shotgun back. And so that, wow. that sp- spawned a little fire in me to, 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 to do my own thing. And so I'd actually went and bought an, another shotgun at the same time and, um, just, did the same work that I was going to be paying him to do basically on the shotgun that, he, that it took him six months to do. And so it just, that kind of sparked the interest in actually not just buying guns and shooting guns, but working on guns. And, um, and then to make a long story short, cause it, 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 it kind of, kind of speeded up to where we, to where we actually started shooting uh, competitively is, uh, is, there was a whole lot of talking that goes on in, in the gun stores about shooting and there's not much shooting that any of those guys do. So <laughs> before, <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, before long, we realized that, uh, that, uh, that, you know, the ranges were the standard public ranges really weren't for us. Um, pretty much every single range I would either get, you know, shut down for, you know, not being able to, uh, shoot too fast or use a holster or, um, you know, you, you'd have to have your butt completely on the seat, you know, even though whether you could see your optic or not. And so those things really turned me off from uh, local ranges and I'd never had the opportunity for, and no one had introduced me to USPSA or, or three gun on a personal level. And so, um, Lan and I actually went to the freedom munitions, uh, local store, which, uh, Re- uh Rudy Zaruba opened a local freedom munitions retail store in Houston, um, and which is not too far from the uh, from the gun store that we uh, that we were you know hanging out and buying guns at, and uh, they were having their grand opening, and the Novesky shooting team uh, had had come in, um, and they were giving away you know different raffle prizes and, and things like that. And Lan had actually bought a ticket, a raffle ticket, and put it into the Novesky three gun class uh, training class. And so he, and he won that at, at that grand opening. Sweet. And so, yeah. And so I was like, oh man, I was like, okay, well, and then the next thing I knew, I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and buy a slot into the class. And so I bought a slot and, uh, and then I think like the, within like a, within a week I was on DSG.com, DSG arms, uh, building my first three gun rifle. <laughs> and, <laughs> Sweet. uh, and then literally I think within another week or so it was, uh, you know, uh, the Sandy Hook tragedy had happened. And then, then there was a big, um, you know, the big run on guns and the, you know, the Obama gun scare that, you know, everybody where the ammunition where well, parts became unavailable and then the ammunition became unavailable. And so, uh, so I actually was able, we, we got into three gun right as that was happening. And, um, and then, you know, to speed forward a little bit more, we, uh, actually decided to go out to shot show that year. Um, this, we hadn't actually uh, attended the class yet. So the class was scheduled, I believe in, in February sometime and shot shows in January. So we went out to shot show and, uh, you know, just, just did a little bit of moving around, looking at the uh, different, the gun industry and this and that. And we were, we were able to talk to, uh, Jansen and, uh, and, uh, uh Rob. Yeah. Well, actually Rob wasn't out, out at shot show, oh. but, uh, but, uh, Casanova. Yeah, Casanova. Gosh, uh, James, and, James and 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 Jansen were both at the Benelli booth and uh, out at uh, a Shot Show, and so we went and talked to those guys. We're like, "Hey, we uh, signed up for your class, Land One One. 
you know, we're really looking forward to seeing you guys. And then, yeah, they're like, no problem. Just, just bring your, your gear that you normally shoot at matches. And, and it was funny because it really, it hit home that man, well, we don't shoot matches because we haven't shot anything, you know, we hadn't shot anything right. yet. And so, uh, so we really got back and, uh, we, you know, had no idea what to do. So, you know, we of course bought the, the, uh, the, uh, the video, right. The, uh, Noveski three gun nation or three gun video, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and so we we'll looked at that, and then uh, and then uh, you know we didn't know what we didn't know, put it that way. And so and uh, we went to their class, you know, come whenever they came back to Houston, but in January we went to their class, and uh, and uh, it's just funny because I actually was, was shooting a uh, magazine fed shotgun in that class, and I was so excited about the class, and I decided to put a new optic on it, you know, which is the, the number one thing you did not do before you go shoot is try <laughs> yeah. anything new, right? Change, change something. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Change something. So I had my shotgun was running great, you know? And so I'm like, Oh, I'm going to put this nice new EO tech on my shotgun. And so I put it where I thought it looked nice, which is right over the ejection port. And uh, <laughs> of course I had one malfunction after another for the entire class. And so, so it was, uh, it was, it was a uh, pretty funny class because, uh, because uh, how, how much how much I struggled in it and, and looking back on it, you know, how far, you know, we've come since that, since that, since there. And uh, so anyways, just moving forward from 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 the class, we, um, you know, within two or three weeks, I think was Texas Multigun. So we were already signed up for a major um, within I think within six weeks of, of, of putting on our first three gun belt. And so. Uh, <laughs> And then we, after Texas Multigun, we were hooked. And so we were, um, started looking on Brian Enos and um, anywhere else you could possibly, you know, look for matches, you know. And so everything good was already sold out. You know, you couldn't get into Rocky Mountain. You couldn't get into the Pro-Am or FNH or, you know, all the marquee matches uh, were already sold out or, or, or maybe it already happened even. And so we, um, we went to Sparta, Illinois to shoot the Nordic components practical shotgun challenge, which was a only happened one year. The gateway three gun guys are the ones that put it on the, uh, the ones out of the guys out of St. Louis. And, um, it was 20 stages of all practical shotgun. And, yeah, that um, sounds awesome. we, and so, yeah, I mean, we were flying to a, a match within just a couple of months of, uh, uh, you know, getting out there. And, and, um, so we, we went there and, you know, didn't know anybody at all, basically. And so, uh, we, uh, um, we're, we're able to lucky enough to squad with the Mitchells. So, uh, wow, yeah. Uh, Ryan, yeah, Ryan Muller and, uh, Diana, uh, um, were, were on our squad also. And, uh, so it was pretty cool to be able to squad with those guys, uh, you know, from the, from, you know, all the way from, from the very beginning, shoot 20 stages with Jerry over, over two days, you know, and, um, you know, I learned to, uh, to, to ask questions when, when you can and, um, learn, learn by watching, you know, a lot. If you, if you watch the best and you learn that they're creatures of habit and, uh, it's, so you can actually learn a lot by squatting with top shooters, um, being self-aware of, of what you're capable of and, and what they're doing and, and trying to, to, to bring those two together is a, a really good way to, to advance your skill level also. So I always say, try, if you, if you can squad with the best, do so, you know, um, you can't always, sometimes there's sponsored slots and things like that, but you know, it, it, you, you can really get a lot by squatting with, you know, the best shooters and spending two three days on the range, you know? And, um, That's uh, so, so I was fortunate enough to do that, you know, uh, really early on. And, um, and then also, uh, Land and I went out to Task Force Dagger One our first year. I mean, it's known as one of the hardest three gun matches, especially you know in the in the modern three gun age. Um, that and we were it went and shot that our first year uh, out in Georgia. I don't, I don't know if you know much about the Task Force Dagger match or if you've seen any of the videos from it, but that was a really awesome, awesome match. Uh, uh, Mike, Mike Cassidy and uh, Andy Horner put on. <laughs> You guys just jumped <laughs> in like both feet first, didn't you? Yeah, man, we really, we really did. Um, so yeah, I mean, and then we, then we literally ended the year by driving all the way out to Rock Castle to shoot uh, what was called the International Pro Am, which is a small match that that didn't really get quite the traction that they wanted, but um, they came through at the end of the year and got got at least you know got it sold out enough to still put on a decent match, and so we were able to end the year by by driving. Uh, um, 
you know, 17 hours in the rain out to Rock Castle <laughs> and to shoot the match, you know, and then to and then just jump right back in the car and drive back. So it was a uh, so that I mean that pretty much ended our that that was our first year of uh, you know of three gun was was really project right into the majors, man, right into 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 shooting shooting anything we could and it didn't really matter how hard it was or how far it was or anything like that as long as it was like you know quality is all that we really cared you know and um you know what when they say that when they say that like three gun is an addiction and and it's addicting you guys are like the poster children for that oh yeah um (laughs) we were driving to a texas multi-gun because the the local three gun in houston was i mean it's sad sad to say but it was really really pathetic it was um just hybrid you know defensive multi-gun just you know honestly stuff that just was didn't make any sense at all it's the best way to explain it and and you certainly weren't going to become a better shooter by you know spending your saturday doing those that style of shooting and so we would drive to to, uh to austin to texas multi-gun and we would drive to north texas multi-gun uh to jeremy moore's matches and we were able to um to see what those different match directors you know did and how they ran their clubs and and they already had better shooters, you know, just, just the, the, the shooter in general was just a better shooter. And so it was, we were like, well, why are they better here? And it's like, okay, well, they got, we have, they have a, a match director or, or a club that that's been, you know, more developed than it is in Houston. So we, we, we tried to, we tried to partner with a few guys in Houston to try to do that same thing. We're like, Hey, can we do like one of the, one of your stages? We'll set it up. We'll tear it down. We'll even supply the steel and, we really got, really got, you know, you know, like, oh, you know, well, we, we could talk to the board or this is a nonprofit club. You know, once, you know, the, the owner or the uh, the president of the club doesn't shoot three gun, you know, that's the kind of the kind of responses that we got. And so we were like, you know, I asked one time out loud, how does anyone get better? And everybody just looked at me I and mean, it was crickets, man. <laughs> and and I was like, wow, no one's ever going to get better. This is just the way it is. And so um, I pretty much decided at that point in time that the only way to become a better shooter was to was to to make it happen for myself. And, um, you know, Lan had the same goals as I did. And so we decided that we were going to do whatever it took to become a better shooter. And so we um, uh, purchased our first set of steel. Um, we, um, you know, made some of our own knockdowns and things like that to save money. And um, we started, uh, we paid for registration at threegunnation.com and we started our own club. We found a weekend that, that other, um, other guys weren't shooting on locally. So we didn't, you know, step on anybody's toes or anything like that. We, I, I decided that, you know, if, if people were going to come shoot our match, they would, they would come shoot it because it was the better match or it was because, you know, if they're going to shoot it one time a month and that's all they have the time or the money to do, then I wanted them to choose our match over another match, you know? So we did that and we quickly, you know, we're selling out our, our matches, which at that range, it was, um, we were more confined. And so we were selling out at 45, 55 shooters, um, pretty much no matter how muddy or how crappy the range was, cause it was pretty bad. Believe me. <laughs> and, uh, and so that started like right away, like you immediately had that many yeah. shooters that wanted to follow you guys around. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was right. I mean, it was immediately that, you know, we told people we were doing this and they were like, I mean, honestly, people, um, local shooters, other shooters were asking us when we were going to start our own match uh, before we even did it. Um, because we were a very, they, everybody knew we had already traveled to more majors than most guys did. And you know, that, that anybody else knew and they already, knew that we went, you know, every other weekend, we'd go out of town somewhere, you know, in the state, we'd drive three hours to go shoot a match. And so it was pretty much the natural course of things was to start our own match, because if you're already spending that much time in the car, you could pretty much dedicate that time and just build your own stages, you know? And, um, and, you know, I've always been a big do it yourselfer. Um, so, you know, if nobody else is going to do it, sometimes you just have to, you know, and that's right. pretty much, pretty much the way it is. And, and, uh, I would love for somebody to have like this super passion for building stages that lived in Houston because I would uh, hire them or I would uh, have them run the club for us. But um, because it's not that I don't I, I don't uh, like doing it, but I, I really wish that uh, that uh, that I was able to just shoot and didn't have to, to, to do both sides of it. But sometimes, you know, it, it's not going to be like that. And 
you know, if we, if we were, if we were not to do it, it probably wouldn't happen or it wouldn't happen at the level we, that we want to do it at. So that's where we are right now, you know? So well, that's pretty cool. So, um, like what year are we talking when you guys, uh, formed this club? Oh, <clears throat> well, 2013 was our first year, uh, in three gun. We spent th- that year, um, okay. really just getting acquainted with, uh, the sport and, uh, traveling, um, you know, both locally, uh, or, or re- excuse me, regionally and nationally. And then, um, going into 14 was when we actually started, uh, started our club. So the, this was at a much smaller range than we're at now called the, uh, the impact zone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we ran about eight months worth of matches there, I believe. And then, uh, going into 2015, we decided that, that, that the kind of stages we like to put on, uh, the dynamic courses of fire, the long range shooting we like to do, um, offhand steel shooting, you know, all all the things that we were really limited in in our first range, we decided that, that, that we needed to find a new home. And there was another range that was a little bit further out um, near college station, Texas, which uh, I went to school at A&M graduated uh, from there. So it's it's actually not too far from Houston. And, um, and so there was a, a local match that was being run out of that club that was really you know, struggling to get enough shooters to make it a viable uh, business plan for for the the range owner, at least at least on his three gun match level. He was running a range, you know, a, a, a semi private range um, with lots of options, but the the three gun match itself was really struggling. And so um, we would go shoot it, and we we would literally get handed the timer. We were like, well, okay, so we have to pay. And we have to time ourselves and the stages are only half set up. So it's like, but the range was such an awesome facility. So we kind of um, just changed our business plan and uh, talked to the range owner, made a new, new, a new deal. And we moved out to, to that range, which, which is where we are now. We've been for the last year and a couple of months. Um, and it's the Cawthon Cartridge Club, uh, also known as a CCC shooting complex. And um, um, some guys may know it from Texas multi-gun like 2000 and like 11 or 12. Um, it's before I was even knew about three gun. Um, but that's, that's, that range is, uh, is actually a really nice facility. We, we can really spread our wings there and do what we want to do. And it's been a big part of us, um, you know, gaining a, 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 you know, profile, you know, locally. And then, and then, you know, regionally as, you know, people will drive to our matches also. And then, um, you know, the, our, our exposure that we've gotten in the three gun nation scene and the, the number of classifiers, you know, that we turn in and, and things like that got, you know, got our team uh, actually on the three gun nation cover. Uh, I forgot what month it was, but we were on the cover last year. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So that was a, I was, I really was appreciative of that, that they recognize that, you know, how much work that we've done to, to, to not only, you know, grow ourselves as shooters, but grow the community uh, the local community and, uh, um, you know, or push the bar, you know, in three gun, you know, not that we're, we've invented the wheel because we certainly haven't. There's, there's, there's people who have been doing this a lot longer than we have, but it's real easy to be lazy building courses of fire. It's real easy to just drop the part time, drop the targets, bring them in closer, you know, make the steel huge, you know, not have mixed loads, you know, not make, have people shoot on their one eighties, all those things will, well, you know, whenever you go to a major, you're, you're going to need to be able to do those things. And if I'm going to be a part of that, that then you're going to be you're going to have to do it, period, because, you know, I, we don't make stuff just hard to be hard. Match flow, stage flow is, is, is extremely important. You know, you have to you should always be doing something, um, you know, loading or shooting. Um, if you're standing there and doing nothing or just just making up distance by running just to do it, it, it doesn't really make sense, you know? Um, yeah. And so, so, you know, having stages, uh, a proper placement, you know, you know, of course, safety is always the most important, but you know, the way I look at it, as long as somebody's got their finger out of the trigger guard and they're not pulling a 180, you can do whatever you want. You know what I mean? Right. And, uh, you know, believe me, the, the last thing I like to hear after I'm done shooting is that was close to the 180, you know, because I don't want to hear that. I like uh, what I want to hear is either, either a great job or I want to hear stop. Cause I, cause I broke a 180. That's it. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. So, so, um, so when so, you run this match, like, uh, every month and you said that you told me earlier that there was, uh, you know, five stages, you're getting out to like 500 yards on, uh, some of the stages. Yeah. How do you keep your stages fresh? How do you come up with, uh, with, uh, ideas for new stages each time? 
Yeah, well, it, it was um, a little bit difficult at first because you always you're constantly trying to be innovative. You know, it's like you want to outdo what you did the month before. Yeah. And that, that's not really like a proper way of looking at things because um, I don't like whenever they start making stages and you just do things to do them. Right. So so the way I look at it is what am I shooting next? OK, so what major is dissident arms going to? So um, for us, the next one's going to be the three gun nation regional uh, south excuse me, Southwestern Regional. And so we're designing stages that are going to prepare ourselves and our shooters to do well at that match. And so what we do is we go and look at previous regional matches, um, previous pro style stages, things that we know that Three Gun Nation is going to likely do, right? Uh, unloaded starts, potentially. Um, play rack. Things, yeah, you know, play, play off, <laughs> Rifle offhand play rack. steel. Absolutely, offhand steel. Um, slugs on paper options, um, all, all those things, uh, you know, position rifle, you know, shooting on the move, uh, you know, uh, clay targets, things that, that you may not see at other matches as much, but you'll see in a three gun nation match. So, so we'll formulate the, the particular style of the stages for that particular month to prepare ourselves and, and our local shooters for whatever match they, that, that we're going to, or they may or may not be going to. And then, then, then on, honestly, the, um, it keeps it fresh on on this end, so the local shooter that only comes to our match, they're they're able to experience um, really five stages of, of major quality stages, you know, in one day, you know, and then they go and sleep in their own bed, you know. So yeah, they, yeah. I mean, honestly, they, um, you know, I wish there was somebody else doing it whenever we were getting started. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was. Um, it, it's been a it's been a good good dynamic as far as um, having that option to to do that, you know. So so like, you know, when we go shoot Fallen Brethren at the end of the year, there's a rifle stage where you have to engage, you know, I don't know, 17 targets that are all, you know, from 250 to 550, you know, and uh, it's, uh, and we can do that at our range. We can, we can put out that many targets, you know, shooting at 120 degrees of rifle, you know, all out into a valley. Um, we can shoot, you know, shotgun up in the air pretty much in any direction, you know. Um, we can, we can, we do mix load junk. We, we regularly have a jungle run with slugs, uh, and birdshot and aerials that, um, is a minimum of 36 rounds. I mean, that's, we're, we regularly have that. So whenever somebody goes to major, they're not like, I can't carry 40 shells on me, you know, that, that right. they already know how to carry 40 shells and use them, you know, they have to use that every month. So they've already got all that gear and everything. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and it's not about just making it hard because you can make stuff hard and dumb and not fun. You know, um, it's about having have, having it so that the guys that have developed the proper skills are able to use those skills. And it's not just a stand and deliver, you know, and a stand and deliver stages are, 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 are my least favorite because it's like, OK, well, you've taken every bit of thing that I've trained for and taken it out of it. And now it's just a pure shooting, which now it's fine. It's all it's all good to have a pure shooting stage, you know, but at the same time. You know, I want to I want to pick my gun up, shoot on the move and then ground it. I don't want to have to run to my gun to pick my gun up to do to do something. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, it's it's a, it's about flow uh, uh, with me. Like really, whenever I go through a stage, you should always you should always be doing something. And typically, as long as you just, uh, um, you know, are just moving and shooting and never really, really like overly, uh, overly struggling. It's usually the fastest times. <laughs> So, you know, uh, Mike, a lot of the match directors I've talked to say that they they struggle with the balance of making a stage challenging for, like, their regular shooters, people that come every month, and then uh, making it accessible for new shooters, someone who may, you know, just be bringing the, the AR that's been sitting in the back of the safe and kind of dipping a toe into the water. How do, how do you find that, uh, find that balance, and uh, is that something you struggle with as well? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. There's, there's always, um, there's always a big, ba definitely a balance that you have to choose in there. So, uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll design a stage on paper that, uh, that seems like what we want. And, um, you know, after we've been doing it a while, you'll, you'll kind of know how many targets you can have in a allotted amount of time. And, um, we have 99 second part times. So we, d we don't rush anybody through our match. Um, a lot of match directors will say that's absolutely too much time. But at the same time, if I'm going to have somebody shoot, you know, 
20 rounds of pistol and then go engage, you know, 12 uh, long range rifle targets, they're going to need a little bit of time. Even our best shooters will take, you know, 30 seconds to do that. So if somebody quote unquote burns it down in 30 seconds, then you have to realize somebody that's at a much lower skill level could take that potential full 99 seconds to shoot. So now you don't want everybody timing out because even if they time out, they may have had fun, but it's kind of a defeating um, thing that happens whenever that buzzer goes off. They're like unload show clear. And then you didn't even get to your targets at all. Yeah. So, and it's hard to get them to come back for that second match. Um, if that happens then. Yeah, absolutely. And so beating people down is not um, a way to go either. So, so, so for long range rifle shooting, we don't, we keep our target size, you know, fairly, fairly big. It's at least eight them away or bigger. And so that a- allows them to shoot out at those distances and to understand that it does take a, you know, a proper rifle position or you have to actually know what your holds are, what your am- where your ammunition hits to shoot out at, 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 at 300 plus. But the target size is large enough that with, you know, a reasonable hold, reasonably knowing your, your ammunition, you should be able to hit those targets. So, so the, so the a guy that really knows his ammo can blaze through them, you know, now that may not help him particularly whenever he goes to a match and he has to shoot really, really small targets, but you know, that one guy, you know, can deal with that situation is where the, 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 the shooter with less skill can, can figure out to how to engage those targets. You know, if they never get a chance to shoot at those targets, then they'll never get, get any better at it. That's for sure. You know, um, and then, you know, but but the, the thing is, is like start with pistol, put your rifle position forward so that you're able to to shoot to your rifle. And then that way, the re, all the reset on the stage can happen while they're in their final rifle position. Right. And then so whenever they're even if they do time out, the whole stage is reset, you know, so literally the next shooter is ready, ready to roll. So. Yeah, you yeah that that shooter timed out, but they didn't wait. That the, the stage was able to be reset while that shooter, you know, was was spending all that extra time engaging those long range targets. You know, right. Um, same thing with the jungle run is you know we'll we'll put a, a, so many targets that that if you don't stay moving and shooting, you're you will potentially run out of time or you know and so um, you know, of course we run, we run the uh, three gun nation rules and, and we, we run them like the guys that are going to be at the top and, 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 and all that, we, we keep the rules really tight, but if there's a new shooter or somebody struggling on a jungle run, we're going to walk, talk them through that as ROs. We're going to, you know, say, you know, calm down, you know what I mean? Uh, load that slug, make the next one count, you know, or if, the, if it, or, you know, you got two on the left, you got, you know, load, load four, two on the right, you know, we'll keep them moving through the stage so they don't time out, you know, and, um, and they'll really thank us because it's, they're, they're not understanding, you know, the, 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 the course management and that, that, you know, don't, don't waste so much time on one target so you don't finish the stage. So that's what I, I preach to uh, shooters a lot is, is let, let something go if you're struggling with it, move on, complete the stage. Don't take the penalties on all those targets at the end. And then that teaches them to kind of move through the stage, do what they do well, and not really get bogged down into, uh, you know, one one popper that won't go down or or a slug target that they can't hit. Now they're just wasting their entire part time, you know, when they got still have 30 targets ahead of them, you know. And so, um, so, so just, just trying to help the new shooters out a lot, you know, and then uh, honestly, uh people kind of like rise to the challenge a lot too. I realize that. Um, so, so having it, having it out there, will will get a lot of people to, f- they'll figure it out themselves as opposed to, to just, just being defeated and not coming back. Um, the, the, the match director that was at this range before we took over, um, ran some crazy rules. And, uh, when you started engaging a long range rifle target, you could not move on unless you neutralize the target ran out of ammo or you quit. Oh, <laughs> so, really? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I, I was at one and he would regularly have, um, 30 target, uh, ridge runs with all the targets are at past 200 yards with like five, six, seven positions. Wow. And so, uh, we really like, kind of like, like had our balls busted, I guess, so to speak, you know, from the very beginning. And, um, he, he pushed me to the point of wanting to quit almost. 
And, you know, I, I ran out of ammo on a 309 yard target. You know, it was like my 27th target to engage. And there were still like six more behind it, you know. And uh, I ran out of ammo. I spent like 30 something rounds on one target at 309 yards. And, you know, on the way home, I was like cussing them and saying this and that and saying, why can't you move on? You should be able to move on. And, you know, you should, you, you really should. But at the same time, why could I not hit that target? You know, why was I not able to, to shoot a 309 yard target? Why did I use so much ammunition? You know, and this is when, when, uh, uh, reman ammo was like 60 cents a round, you know? Yeah. Yeah, seriously. And so, I mean, I was buying $600 cases of reman and it was just, you know, and, and, and literally raining down bullets on targets, you know? And so. I, I kind of looked at myself and, and, and was like, well, why can't I shoot it? Is it in my ammo? Is it my, my technique? Is it my training? Is it, what is it? And it was really all of those things. Um, I never had nobody, no one had ever trained me, nor have I I'd spent the proper time to learn how to, to shoot anything at any distance, especially, um, you know, under the conditions that, 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 that stage was underneath like that. And so, uh, so, you know, I heard about this thing called Straylock, which everybody probably knows about now. And uh, with the uh, app on your phone to, to know your ballistic calculations. And um, I decided to get some match grade ammunition and um, spend a little bit of time of, 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 you know, doping the rifle and understanding, you know, a little bit about what long range three gun shooting is, which certainly is not bullseye shooting. It's not, um, you know, it's not it's not F1 class shooting by any means. But typically, if you can hit a, a forum away target, you know out to 500 yards, you're doing really well in three gun, especially if you can do it on your first shot. And, um, and I learned that, that, that there, uh, most of your time in a match, after you learn how to shoot your pistol, well, shoot your shotgun, well, load your shotgun, well, you do all the normal three gun stuff. Well, the major amount of time in a three gun match is shooting long range rifle and shooting slug targets. And so I, decided that I wanted to be a, a one for one guy or a near one for one guy in those areas. And it really made a big difference on, on, on my shooting and, um, you know, having the patience to, to, to get in the proper holds for your slugs and, and your long range rifle, you know, pays off significantly. So, so that I went from shooting, you know, three to four to five rounds at, at every target at 60 cents a round to shooting one round at a dollar 10 a bullet, you know? So I was shooting, um, 77 grain match Kings, you know, buying them by the box, 20 rounds a box for like $22, you know? Right. And, uh, and, but I would shoot those targets one for one. So my, 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 my actually out of pocket went down by shooting better ammunition and becoming a more disciplined shooter. And then, you know, now we load our own, um, we load Nosler 77s, you know, and, uh, shoot, we shoot freedom munitions, uh, 55 grains for, you know, anything inside of 250 and, um, and then, you know, load all of our own pistol extreme bullets. And, um, so, so I, you know, the, that's the a whole nother dynamic of free gun is becoming, you know, a reloader and understanding, you know, ammunition and things like that. And, um, and, uh, you know, under, uh, uh, that match director basically pushing me to the edge made, made me become a better shooter. And so now most people aren't going to be able to handle what he did because literally people quit his match and never came back. Sure. Never came I, back. I can imagine. Absolutely, they did. And so that was one of the things that we did when we came out there was we we're like, well, we don't want to make the match easy or dumb it down, but we certainly can't have the kind of match that was out there before. So we we, we play off a little bit of um, making it hard, making it dynamic, um, making make, forcing shooters to use skills that they don't know that they have or that they don't know that they're developing, you know? So if they come and shoot our match once a month and they learn how to, you know, um, engage a slug target in between bird shot, bird shot targets without, you know, shooting the wrong thing, then if they do that every month, then they're going to be, be able to do that no problem whenever the time's right at, at a major. You know what I mean? Sure. Or, yeah. And so and, and or, you know, learning how to how to 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 you know, whenever you're engaging, like, you know, aerial target, you know, an aerial popper, you know, that there's a transition target there to shoot the popper, shoot the transition target, shoot the aerial, because that's the way we place our targets. You know, we don't just have a, have a, a popper with an aerial with nothing to shoot in between, you know what I mean? So, so the, the more advanced shooter is going to realize they have a situation to shoot popper transition aerial 
as where a new shooter is just going to shoot the popper and wait for the aerial, or they're going to shoot the, the, the transition target, then shoot the popper, then shoot the aerial, you know? And so, so it's just about thinking about courses of fire and, and about, you know, kind of like either the, the advanced shooters are going to know how to do it. And then the other shooters are going to develop those skills by just being exposed. So one of the things that you mentioned when, uh, when you had like the, you know, the hard match director, um, that made you reevaluate your long range rifle game was the, uh, the stray lock app. Now, a lot yeah. of guys are familiar with that, but so, you know, there's probably people that are listening that aren't. Can yeah, you absolutely. tell us like, uh, you know, <clears throat> how that particular thing like made you, uh, you know, evaluate your long range rifle game and yeah, how it helped yeah, absolutely. you? Absolutely. Well, you, you, uh, you know, you, you have to chrono your ammo. So you would basically get a chronograph, which is, you know, if you don't shoot USPSA, um, you may not own one. Um, so that way you can borrow one, you can borrow one from somebody or buy one. I, I suggest buying one, especially if you're going to be an active shooter, but you need to know what feet per second that the bullets leaving your firearm, um, both your rifle and your pistol. And, and you can even do your shotgun just to give you an idea of what's actually going on, like how fast your slugs are and things like that. But um, so that that information, the, the bullet size, the ballistic coefficient, which can be looked up online, uh, the manufacturer's website, um, the app is a free app. There are there is a paid version. Uh, I still run the free app and uh, land has the paid version. There are some advantages of the paid um, at, at the level of long range shooting. I do all I need to know is what my mill hold is. So I'm self taught. Um, so if I uh, probably not going to speak in, in in exact terms, but. Basically, Straylock uh, allows you to uh, choose the reticle that you have in your optic and choose the size bullet you're using, the ballistic coefficient, and you enter your zeroing condition. So your what, uh, what yardage you zeroed at, uh, the grain coefficient, uh, temperature, I believe, and uh, elevation, maybe bar barometric pressure and things like that. You can also put the wind speed in. And so you put in all of your... Uh, con uh, current conditions and your zeroing conditions and the yardage that you are in going to engage a particular target at and you hit calculate and hit hit the reticle and it'll actually show you a visual representation of what your hold is on on a target at that distance with that particular wind and uh, the ammunition all that kind of stuff and so it's surprisingly accurate um, at this at this at this the the, the 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 precise shooting that we do or the, the lack of precision that we do as non bullseye shooters it's absolutely plenty uh plenty good enough for us um having that visual representation you know of that or or like for instance if you go to a stage uh, maybe even the day before and you're like all right there's five targets um you go ahead and write down the distances maybe do a quick little diagram on a piece of paper and then you can actually um uh, type to your holds in a stray lock and then you can you can you know i used to do this more before i knew my holds well is i would actually do a little diagram representation on my sheet, sheet of paper of what the hold was for each target and then so whenever you um you just you just look at that a few times you know and then you, and then it'll it'll get loaded up into your memory and then when you go to that stage the next day you're like okay you do your walkthrough and you're like, you do your normal walkthrough. And then when you get to the point of, 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 of looking at your rifle targets again, you don't have to scramble around, get your range finder, figure out what your holds are, all that. You've got, I've got it written down on a little, little cheat sheet, basically. And then you just know that I'll, I'll know that my first target is, um, you know, let's just say it's 350 yards. And so I'll know that that's 0.95 mils. So for me, I run a, a loop old Mark six and a 300, and 50 yard target is 0.95 mils. And so I'll know that if it's a fat, you know, big target, if I just genuinely put one mil hash on that target, it's going to hit, you know, especially with good ammo. And, um, and so knowing your holds is, is huge for, for long range shooting, slug shooting, you got to know your holds on, on all your guns, but it really comes into play, you know, on, on slugs and long range. Cause I I'll tell anyone over and over again, become a, a near one for one guy on slugs and near one for one guy on long range shooting and you will change your three gun. Yeah, it's true. You know, I, I messed around with the uh, straight lock app when I was down at the uh, tactical performance center, they had recommended that we all pick it up. And I yeah. was, I had never messed with it before. I'd had some other free ballistic apps that were not near the, uh, the caliber, so to speak, that this one is. And, uh, 
bad pun by the way, but yeah. but <laughs> but uh anyway, I'm so I was so impressed by by just showing, you know, it showing the reticle and where your hold is, it makes it, you know, s- so simple to find those long range targets that way. It's, it's extremely helpful um, it, on all aspects of shooting. Being able to visualize what you're, what you need to do on the other end of your firearm is the most important thing. You know, whether it's uh, visualizing your your, your walk through, visualizing how your sights are going to lift on each target, visualizing how you're going to, um, you know, position your 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 yourself correct to 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 call your last shot, to to ground your firearm without the you know without moving moving the least amount. Um, to without you know, seeing the next target, you know, and all, all those things, um, you know, are, are, are really important that you're able to visualize those. If you're able to, to visual, close your eyes and visualize the stage, then literally when the buzzer happens, it, it's like, a, it's like, a, it's like an instinctual reaction. You don't have to, whenever you touch something hot, you don't have to say that's hot, remove your hand. You just remove your hand. You know, when the doctor hits your knee with a little hammer, and you're and, and you have that 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 reflex. You don't have to tell yourself to do that. And the, the the more that you're able to, the more training you do, the more rounds down range, the more that you meaning meaning meaningfully visualize what you're doing, um, is going to make you a make you a, you know a better shooter, a subconscious shooter, one that 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 seems like you know that that you know how. Whenever you ask yourself, how did that person do that? Well, they did it by by repetitively doing that and being able to visualize themselves doing it. Yeah. And that repetition and the visualization is, uh, is super important. Um, now when, when you guys get, you know, new shooters at your match, I mean, you guys are doing like, I think you told me, uh, 60 or 70 people at, at your matches now. Yeah, we, we regularly run 60 plus. I mean, we've had 75, I think, in our last two matches. Plus, plus we shoot ourselves. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's that there's, it's 75 plus. Yeah. So that, we a- really have to limit it, limit it. And we had to, we had to force everybody to do online sign up. I mean, uh. yeah. I mean, we, we, we sell, we don't even advertise the match just because it sells out. I mean, it, it's a big I, match. Wish we, I wish we could have multiple events a month, but just because more, more events doesn't necessarily mean more shooters. So, you have to be careful as a match director of um, saying, I'm going to, you know, do all these different events and it's going to mean all these different, you know, uh, people showing up and shooting. Typically, you know, people only have so much time or so much money to, to invest. And so having a quality match is, 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 is pretty, is a little bit better model, but at the same time, it does, you know, make it so that it, it, it seems like it's in limited supply, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, so, Mike, what what happened first? Was it Dissident Arms or was it the match? Uh, it was actually Dissident Arms, the company. Okay, so, um, so let's were... take a step back here and let's talk about uh, um, Dissident Arms and how it turned in from uh, you know I'm I'm ticked off at this guy at the gun shop. I'm gonna yeah. machine my <laughs> own gun to uh, to now a uh, full fledged uh, um, you know shotgun company. Well, well yeah, as um, yeah, I'd love to share that as we as we like you said as what happened with the first gunsmith um we we had already been hanging out quite a bit at a local gun store and um they they did a surprisingly amount of business and this was during the obama gun scare and all those things and they would constantly get uh customers that needed sites installed that that needed a barrel pen that needed um you know, some, some small armors work that just needed these different things. And so, and they didn't really offer it. Um, so, so we actually kind of moved in to where we started helping them out as employees of the gun shop, um, doing general gunsmithing. And so that helped um, reduce our, our costs. Cause you know, I was nearly, nearly buying one, you know, pistol or a rifle a month, you know, I was just hooked, you know, just, just the guns <laughs> in general, you know? And so, um, um, and so, you know, we had to figure out how to offset that cost. And I've always been a big do it yourself you know? And so the, there, I saw a need, um, the, the owner of the gun store was, was totally open to us helping them, him out. And we were able to, you know, work as basically part-time employees under his FFL, you know, so it, it, it was all, you know, legal and everything like that. And so, um, then as, as we gained more knowledge on guns and, um, and things like that, it, you know, we've, of course, expanded what, what we did. And, um, I grew up with a wood shop in the backyard and, and a dad that never told me no, or, or it was never had, never, um, had 
didn't have enough time for me. And so we always fixed things and, and did things. And uh, we ran a, you know, a carpentry shop and we've built high end uh, uh, front doors and things like that. So, you know, I, I know how to work with my hands. I understand tools, things like that. And usually with, with anything, if you approach something in the proper way and have the patience to do it, you can pretty much achieve most things. And so, um, so we were getting into uh, gunsmithing and doing different things like that. And so at, at that time we were building uh, our own AK rifles and shotguns. And so, um, so we talked to the gun store owner and we we're like, well, Hey, can we put a few of our guns up for sale? And he was like, what? A, a, an, a, a, an AK over a thousand dollars. Nobody will ever want one of those. You know, that's what we were told, <laughs> uh, you know, a $1,500 shotgun, you know, nobody wants one of those. Are you serious? And he, I was like, well, look, we're going to put the money up for it. If they don't sell, they don't sell. You'll get your commission either, you know, whether it's, you know, if it sells, you'll get a commission. Right. And so he was totally up for it. And so, you know, honestly, we were able to sell, you know, guns fairly easily. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, they weren't just, uh, you know, they weren't the easiest thing to sell, but at the same time, we still were able to move them, you know? And, um, so things kind of progressed and we were introduced to three gun on TV land won the three gun Noveski three gun class. We went to shot show cause we were kind of getting into the gun industry. And now we were being introduced into, into competitive shooting, just, just on the fringes. And then, um, we progressively just kind of expanded what we did as far as going from being, general gunsmith to anything that you may bring your local gun store to being like now we were opening ports like on our own shotguns and we were um installing rear sights you know on our shotguns um uh, just doing like a lot of really basic uh basic thing you know building our, our own ars of course and uh and um and then and then developing the magazine fed shotguns as far as like just really just building them for ourselves and then building them for, 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 for particular customers, but they were, they were not open division shotguns, you know, they weren't, they weren't made for competition. And so, um, you know, basically another year went by. So it's all a 14 went by and, uh, we just did a lot of that, that general stuff kind of started focusing more on, on three gun modifications. Um, we started installing, you know, parts from X rail, um, uh, and, uh, you know, doing, quote unquote full shotgun builds you know and th this is all through the local ffl amss that was our actually our first sponsor and um and then coming into the end of 2015 um amss was 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 changing directions and they were looking to move their shop and they actually you know decided to, to actually close down their store and so we had we had been operating you know with as the employees of them and so we decided that we really had to narrow our focus and we had to get away from being general three gun gunsmith, general three gun modifiers to um, doing what we do best. And so I had already built several shotguns for myself and have been running them over, you know, the course of the last, you know, two and a half, three years. Um, I spent a lot of time behind an R and R uh, shotgun. And, um, you know, I, I can't, I can't say that, you know, everything about it was terrible, but at the same time, I saw a lot of room for improvement and, and that being said, we decided at the end of 2015 that we really needed to do our own thing. And so we applied for our 07 license and, um, distant arms became a standalone, you know, 07 manufacturer, uh, for firearms. And so instead of being the, 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 what do y'all do? Who's distant arms <laughs> that we wanted to be known for one thing. And so, um, I'm going to continue to shoot open. Um, I, I want to have the best shotguns until, until, you know, until we started building the Vepra shotguns, I, I felt like the, 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 the Russian model of a shotgun hadn't really been um, exposed here in the United States as far as like the way the Ipsic guys shoot them. And uh, we shoot all this outlaw shotgun so we can run around with big 20 round mags um, and open divisions kind of different than it is over there. And so um, last year, I, I went out to the Benelli shotgun match, tactical shotgun match that Mark Passamanic put on at Rock Castle. And um, I took the new Vepper that that Lan and I built up, you know, with some of the new mods that we've been doing. And um, I'd been shooting it. Uh, I actually had, had it at Noveski uh, when I got DQ'd and um, uh, did a, almost broke it there and learned a lot about it and 
and took it back and refined it a few times. And then whenever I went out to Benelli, I was, you know, shooting really, really, really well going into the second day. Um, and um, I had ended up having some problems with the sight base, you know, that like, comes on the gun. And it was just one more thing that, you know, I had to go out there and shoot those rounds and realize that that, that could be an issue. And it cost me high overall at the match. Um, and so, you know, I, back to the lab, you know, so we redesigned the sight base, a custom sight base and made the shotgun to where this is never going to happen again, you know, so we don't use the dust cover for, uh, for mounting the optic anymore. We actually have a custom optic mount that's, that's, that's fuse welded in on the shotgun. And, um, so, you know, just to, to, to speed forward here is, is that, is that all the, all these years, these three years and the, the, the tens of thousands of rounds I've had through different styles of magazines, fed shotguns, different configurations that I've built up and run in, in different matches and, 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 and push them to the point of failure or, to, you know, to the point of, 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 of winning a stage by, by 30%, you know, because of, because of unloaded starts or candy canning the mags, you know, and shooting slower, but going one for one, you know, with slugs, buckshot mixes. And, um, and so, we've come up with a shotgun that I feel is the, the most real, you know, reliable, um, the, the, the fastest reloading and the most similar to, you know, the actual shot, uh, actually rifle work that you're already doing. And, and that's the Vepper platform, uh, shotguns that we're putting out right now. And, um, the Russians won world, uh, last year, uh, with their, uh, shotguns and they did it, um, pretty, pretty resoundingly. And, um, you know, uh, uh, moving into this year, we, uh, I had a couple of people reach out to us, you know, and, uh, Kalani Laker was one of those. He was looking to move into open division and, um, uh, he wasn't sure where he was going to land shotgun wise. You know, he, he already had an open pistol, uh, already had an uh, open rifle, which, you know, there's not much difference there. I put a, put a canted optic on, yeah, get your bipod. Right. And, um, and so he was looking at where he was going to fall in on shotgun and, um, you know, back to the, back to what I said earlier about making, you know, expanding your network, making connections, um, making friends, never burning any bridges. Um, at that Benelli match last year, I shot really well the whole match and, and you know, I, I gave it up a little bit at the end, but at the same time, you know, Rob Romero was able to see, you know, what we had been doing and where we were going with our, our shotguns and, 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 and the kind of level that we were pushing with them and that we were, we were legit, that we weren't just, you know, just the, the next little fad, you know what I mean? That these were legitimately highly competitive shotguns. And so, you know, Rob and Kal Kalani were friends and teammates and, you know, Kalani reached out to us and, you know, wanted to get it into a shotgun, get into open division. And, um, you know, I was actually very humbled that, 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 that connection was made, you know, and, uh, and, you know, after, you know, speaking with Kalani and being able to meet him on a personal level, it, he ended up being a really good fit for, um, distant arms sponsored shooter. You know, I call him distant arms West coast. <laughs> and so, <laughs> uh, so, you know, Kalani's out there in, in uh, Phoenix and he, he's been shooting at a high level for, you know, for a long time. I mean, he was one of the names that, I, that I knew whenever I was getting into three gun, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, um, the fact that he was moving divisions and, and, and was considering us and the fact that, you know, that, 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 that Rob had, you know, told him to consider, you know, talking to us, you know, I, I, I was really, I really, really felt like that, 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 you know, things were kind of starting to come together, you know, and that was really a lot more motivation for, pushing this shotgun into really the next level, you know what I mean? Really making it, um, one that, 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 that anybody could pick up and they, they would just think that, okay, well, first of all, it's going to run. Second of all, it's fun as hell to shoot, you know? And third of all, it's like, it's, 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 it's ergonomic. It reloads nice. You know, you can charge it fast, you know, I mean, all the things that you need to do, the shotgun does, you know, and then, and then, you know, I'm a shooter first. So, if our stuff doesn't run, I personally don't take it well. And so it's paramount that the it has to run. And if it doesn't run or if there's an issue, then I want to know why. And I want to get to the bottom of it. And, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm going to be there for anybody shooting one of our guns to, to figure that out. And so I feel like that, you know, our customers, our shooters, you know, hopefully feel that from us. And, and that's that's helping build 
build that, you know, relationship that we want because, you know, these, these are competition shotguns. Um, of course, we could build a tactical model, make it all black instead of orange like mine is. <laughs> and, uh, and so, but, and, 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 you know, they'll, 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 they'll perform at any level, but the competition level is, is it's either, it's, it's either a guy that's going to buy it because he can afford it and he's going to shoot it and it'll go in the safe and whatever. And those guys are great, but the competition shotguns has to be able to perform, you know, at the highest level, you know, somebody like Kalani, um, and, and our other wet, our East coast shooter, uh, nubs. Hunter Kale shooting for us this year. These guys are going to put tens of thousands of rounds through their shotgun in one year, you know, and this is 12 gauge shotgun. So, you know, it's got to work. It's got to perform at a high level. It can't leave them, you know, you know, on a, on, in, uh, on a course of fire that they can't complete. You know what I mean? Um, I've been there before and understand that. that and so the, the last thing that I want to happen is it be a failure of equipment. And so, um, the, the things that we've done on the shotguns and, and you know, bring that, that likelihood of, 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 of not being able to complete a stage or, or giving up, giving up a stage because you had to rack the shotgun or, or you, know, you left, you know, clays in the air because you had a malfunction or things like that. Right. Those are all the things that I've had to deal with and, and, and have and consider and take, take, you know, ex- you know, extremely personal as far as like, I want somebody to be able to basically, you know, approach the, the true 100% reliability. You know what I mean? Well, if it's, I, I love that. You know, and like you said, uh, you know, when you referred to, uh, you know, taking your personal shotgun to, uh, to these big matches, you like back in the lab, you know, it reminds me of, of what you were talking about earlier is like the, uh, the traditional gun store person that doesn't necessarily shoot a lot. So if you're going to buy like a competition shotgun, you want to buy it from a guy who shoots competition all the time. Absolutely. I mean, um, I, um, you know, the guys that are out there actually doing and not just saying are the ones that I I respect the most. And it's not that somebody can't, um, from the outside look on and be a, be, be critical in a, in a good way and things like that. But the guys that are actually, you know, have done it and and are still doing it. Those are the ones that I, I I respect the most. And, 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 you know, I've, I've, I went back and trained, you know, um, it's just a side caveat is I went back after being, you know, after starting three gun, you get into shooting all three firearms. Well, I'll be the first to tell you that starting in three gun is not necessarily the best way to become a great shooter. Um, right. Having three different firearms with these dynamic courses of fire. Um, it's really hard to focus on the individual processes of each firearm to become a better, better shooter. And so, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that landing bash on book that it says, you know, don't focus on the outcome, focus on the processes. And so whenever you try to focus on three guns at once and you're not proficient in any of them, it's very difficult to become a high level shooter, you know, with limited time and limited, you know, you know, ammunition and things like that. And so, um, that same match director that, that basically almost made me quit, <laughs> he <laughs> made a comment at another one of his matches after I actually did start shooting rifle really well <laughs> and started shooting shotgun really well is he, he was, he yelled from the top of his lungs cause I, I couldn't shoot a, a pistol target at, at the end of a match. I struggled on the pistol stage and he was really hard on guys. I and mean, he, he made one guy almost cry one time. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. That's not funny. Well, he goes, he goes white sides. That was world-class rifle and damn good shotgun, but your pistol is absolutely terrible. And, you know, I took that personal and I was like, wow, you know, my pistol really does suck, you know, and, it, and it's, it's a constant, it's a constant, um, you, 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 you reach plateaus and you gain certain skills and you're like, wow, I'm good at this. But then it, all it does is expose how crappy you are at something else. For sure. And so, you know, and, and, and the, that's, that's a part of, of us, of self-awareness that, that I talk about. And I remember uh, Aaron Hayes talking about on one of your shows. Was that that self awareness is 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 a, is critical in in to pushing yourself to the next level and to becoming a better shooter. That you got to be aware of what your skills are to not shoot past those skills because all it's going to do is is cause you um, um, to uh, have penalties and to and to, to to not shoot your game. You know they always say shoot your game, shoot your game. Well, it's the truth because as soon as you don't shoot your game, try to shoot somebody else's game. Guess what, Mike? 
penalty DQ. You know what I mean? Right. And so, you know, I, I DQ'd four times last year out of state trying to push it. I had this vision of the shooter that I wanted to be. I knew what I was capable of, but I hadn't done the proper training at a high enough level, you know, to shoot that way, to shoot at the, at the level I thought I should be at. And so um, after DQing at Three Gun Nation Nationals last year, that was my fourth DQ in one year uh, out of state. I, 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 I really started looking at myself, you know, like really, you know, like what, what's happening. And they were all different kind of DQs too. They weren't the same thing, you know, and it all came down to, to not shooting my game, trying to shoot the game of, you know, maybe of what I would be in a year from then or two years from then or, or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Whatever it was, it was above and beyond what I was currently capable of, you know, not what I was capable of doing on one stage, but what I was capable of doing for an entire match, you know? Um, so I, I went and trained, um, Lan and I both went and trained with Max Michelle. Um, we went and spent three days with Max. Uh, it's a good way so, to up your pistol game a little bit. Yeah, man. Like I said, <laughs> I respect the guys that, that do it, do it at a high level that he, he's also a great coach. You know what I mean? So he's passionate about what he does. He's the current world champion. Um, was the national champion last uh, last year, I guess, or the, the year before. He just barely got pushed off of that, I believe. Um, and then, um, and so because he's the because he's current champion, he's got those millions of rounds downrange. He's got countless titles. He's still doing it at a high level. I mean, he shoots multiple divisions, uh, steel challenge, crosses over between dot and irons. You know. Um, so, you know, I was like, well, let's, let's, let's go to the best. Let's go to the best to train. And so we did. And it, it was so refreshing to really have that, that, um, to have someone, you know, again, that's been doing it for decades to, to, to be able to, to explain it passionately in a way that I can understand, you know, to, to tell me what the number one time saver is on a stage, to tell me what the number two time sa saver is on a stage, and then to explain to me how to develop the skills to save all that time, you know, and, um, and, and, and the, how he had a formula, you know, to it. And so now whenever I go and walk a stage, I'm able to, to break down that, break down that stage. I know exactly where my feet need to be. I know exactly what, how to engage the targets, all, all these things that I was kind of like, I did by what felt good. Now I can actually have a formula to, to follow, you know? And so, um, so it, that's been a, a really big part of me uh, developing my, 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 my three gun skills was becoming a best, better pistol shooter. And so, you know, about a year into three gun, we started shooting USPSA, but not really at a, um, a whole lot. But as I started realizing how important it was to be a good pistol shooter, uh, locally, I shoot you know, as much USPSA as I do three gun. Um, and, you know, I shoot quite a few three, uh, USPSA majors, but they're usually more regional and I save my, um, my traveling, you know, expenses for, for three gun, which is my, which is my main passion, but, but man, um, pistol can, can pistol can be really fun. I call it one gun. So this is a three gun show. So that, <laughs> I, I call it pistol, well, pistol or shotgun. I call it one gun. Right. So, I love it. So, yeah. So, uh, one, one gun is much less stressful. It's much less gear. Uh, the stage breakdown is almost the same other than weapon transitions and, and, and the difference in, you know, you know, of course, uh, manual of arms and things like that. Much of the of it's the same. It, it, mentally, it's very much, very, very much the same in, in the mental processes you use. So focusing on that one gun and becoming great at one gun, you know, or well, let me put it this way, becoming good at, at each of the one guns will make you a great three guard for sure. Oh, for sure. And yeah. you, you know, that's what I, I really liked about that, uh, that story of you seeking out the training from, uh, Max, when we talked about it the other day is that you had a hard 2015 with, you know, a couple big, or I guess four big DQs. Yeah. And, uh, you and I talked to, talked to each other about, or at Noveski about that. And, uh, it, it seems like you had some, uh, introspection and some reflection on that. And, uh, and then you took steps to change your game, which, which I totally love because that's all this show is about is getting better, right? That's the whole thing. So what specifically have you, did you evaluate that you were doing wrong along, you know, along with getting better at pistol? Have you changed around for 2016 that you're 
um, that you're implementing as far as, you know, maybe practice, maybe, um, you know, going a different speed. Right. What, what's changed right. for you in 2016? Yeah, absolutely. There's definitely been some, some changes uh, going into this year. Um, uh, again, uh, for me, it's all about the shooting. And so going into 2016, I was very upset with the way I shot in 2014. You know, I spent a lot of money, a lot of time, made a lot of personal sacrifices um, you know, to, to, to be able to go shoot and, you know, I want to perform better at the end of the day, you want to be proud of the way you shoot. Okay. Whatever level you're at, you want to be proud of yourself. You you want to feel like it wasn't a waste of time and effort. And so, you know, I, I, I realized that, that the only way to do that was to be able to, to have a, a better training and practicing, um, regimen. And so, you know, after going and, and, and training with Max once and in 14, um, uh, at the very end of 14, I believe, excuse me, at the, at the beginning of 15, I went back again to train with Max. And this is after all the DQs, um, to complete his, 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 his entire, you know, pistol course, his, his entire philosophy, I guess you'd say. And, um, mm-hmm. uh, I went back and actually trained with him by myself. Uh, well, I say by myself, land, land didn't go, but I went to a, a class down in South Texas that he was, uh, training and uh, I brought all the information back. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to com- to complete his philosophy so that I could, in, in, in part, take what he had done with Pistol in, in, in whatever capacity I could and translate that over into my two long guns, you know? So um, I, I, I tell Max whenever there's a, a pistol, I say, what would Max do, you know? And, uh, and that's the way I approach the stage. And then whenever... Um, you know, the, 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 that there's a, a, a three guns there, you know, a shotgun or, or a rifle. I, I ask myself, well, what would Jerry do? <laughs> you know, nice. so these are the guys that I currently like, you know, are currently at a very high level uh, in open, open division and, and the two, two sports that I, that I love, you know. And so these guys train, they train, they train, they train and they train some more. And so certain things stuck with me, like when Max said he was getting ready for um, Steel Challenge 2015, he made a comment that I saw on Shooting USA that I shot a thousand rounds a day to get ready for this, is what he said. He said, I shot a thousand rounds a day to get ready for this. And I was like, wow. That's a lot. Wow. That's the way he became Steel Master. You know, not because he's superhuman, you know, he's got natural ability above and beyond most. But he's developed that ability, you know, through through, you know, his life. He's been dedicated, you know, but at the same time, you know, he's putting in what it takes to be currently the current champion, you know, not just I did it at one point in time, you know, he's still maintaining that high level. And the same thing with Jerry, you know, and, you know, I asked Jerry before, you know, what he does and, you know, you know, he's got his own program and all that, I'm sure, but he works on his weaknesses, you know, before a match and things like that. And so um, being comfortable when on a stage before you shoot it, it, it is, is a paramount, right? And so how do you become comfortable? Well, you become comfortable by shooting things that are harder and shooting them more than you're going to do at this point in time, right? So you kind of train hard and, and then, the, then the courses of fire seem easy. So like I'll use small steel in practice. Um, I, I'm trying to maintain uh, 1,000 rounds of pistol a week. It's very tough. <laughs> yeah, it's very very tough. Um, Land and I committed to 50,000 rounds of pistol at the beginning of the year. We're we're behind our mark some, but we'll catch it back up. Um, I can tell you whenever I was on that mark, wow, was I really feeling it? You know what I mean? Um, at, at, after my last EQ and um, at nationals last year, uh, I pretty much decided I went and trained with Max like six weeks later, I think it was. And then, you know, I told Lan I was going to start shooting a thousand rounds a week that I, I, I just, I, I felt like as long as they, I had, they had a meaning behind each one of them that wouldn't be wasting ammo. And, and that, that, that those rounds would actually, you know, push me into the shooter that I want it to be. And, um, and, uh, you know, it's been, it's been extremely helpful and, uh, the dry fire. I mean, I can't say enough about dry fire. Um, what I can say is it's really boring, <laughs> but at the same time, at the same time, it's so helpful. And I, I, I really need to develop my dry firing regiment better. Um, but 
you know, having the opportunity to live fire, you know, you can't replace that. Um, you know, I, I don't do a lot of reading of books or, or things like that, but lots of things I, I'll remember and they, they stick in my head and, and things like that. And, it, and it's about, um, you know, guys telling me that they, you know, need a minimum of uh, two live fires a week, you know, plus like four dry fires, you know, if you want to be that, you know, champion or potentially, you know, or just if you want to, if you want to be the shooter you're envisioning, it's going to take some real time. It just really is. And, um, and so going into this year, uh, we have access to the range that we run our three gun match at. We're able to drive out there and shoot anytime we want. But the, the issue is, is it's an hour and 10 minutes away. So, and, you know, we, we, we get talked to a lot on that range and, and, and it's, it's hard to really focus on ourselves when we get there and things like that. So, you know, I, I rented a bait from another, another range that's um, probably like 45 minutes away. So it's 25 minutes closer. So you save 25 minutes each way. And I was able to move a certain amount of our steel over to that, to that bay. And uh, this morning we went out there and practiced before a local USPSA match that was going to be at the same range. Well, they ended up canceling the match because it was going to rain, right? Well, we'd already had two hours of practice in before the match got canceled. And then, and then, so I'm, or, I've already got 500 rounds down range and then the match gets canceled. You know what I mean? So yeah. that, that, that dedication or, or, or just understanding that you're going to have to, you know, have to put it in if you really want to go somewhere and, and, and everybody's got their own goal. So you, you don't have to necessarily compete against, you know, Max against Jerry against like that. But if you, if you think you're ever going to, then you're going to have to put it in. Believe me, you're going to have to put it in. And, and that requires, you know, you know, sacrifices, um, it requires, it's, you know, financially and, and, you know, personally and things like that, but you can also figure out how to make it easier on your life. Like I'm saving 50 minutes every time I go out and practice by moving my range. You know what I mean? Um, we partnered up with a local, uh, indoor range. So if I want to go and just, you know, shoot, shoot down and, you know, straight, but I want to go shoot. Well, I have a local range that I can go do that at. And I, I encourage anyone that, that, um, that wants to start, you know, messing with the sponsorship game and things like that. Look local first. Um, you know, it, your sponsorships, you know, shouldn't be about like trying to get somebody on your shirt so you can, you know, gain some or some type of notoriety that you may think that you're getting or whatever. So the, what it is, it's about building relationships, even if they're your local range. Well, if you go and shoot at your local range 50 times in a year, think about how much saving that, that range fee would be. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so, and we go and test fire guns too. So man, uh, just our, our, our local indoor range is actually a big sponsor for us, you know, financially, if you think about it, because of the, that, the amount we would have to travel and, or go spend if they weren't helping us out is it, significant, you know? And so, um, so I, I encourage anyone to, to look local, like, um, uh, you know, your shooting supply stores and things like that, you know, those guys need sales. They, so you could potentially drive them business. And then, you know, you need discounts, even if it's just their cost, you know, they may not give you anything, you know, um, but if they can extend their cost to you, you know, or maybe give you a couple pounds of powder and then extend costs on the rest of your items or, or things like that, you know, um, you know, I, I encourage people to, to look at sponsorship in that way, you know, and, um, you know, and it's about, you know, for me, I have to figure out how to reduce my cost as a shooter. And, but I also want to shoot things that I believe in. So I'm not going to shoot something just that somebody gives me just because it's free. Um, that's not the way it would be, you know, it's for me, you know, we shot a lot of, used a lot of people's products and still do. And, and, you know, I, 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 I've supported those, those companies over the years and some of them have become sponsors and things like that. So it, it, it's, you know, it's been, it's been a, um, you know, it's been a, a, a journey, or I guess you'd say, you know, to, 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 to move through that, that level, but at the same time, figuring out how to keep your costs down, um, finding easy access to, to range, proper dry fire practice, having a plan when you get to the range, um, practicing with only one person that's at similar skill level. So for instance, um, Max will tell you this for sure. Don't go in a group and think you're going to practice or you're going to have a group practice. It doesn't work. The guy that's at the higher skill level ends up, ends up coaching everyone. And if he's a nice guy, he ends up getting absolutely zero work in himself. And so it's important to, to go to the range, first of all, with a plan and to us, to, with another training partner that can, 
constructively critique and, and criticize what, what you, what you're doing, you know? So he should be able to see, you know, if you're out of position or, or things like that. And then, and then you in turn do that same, that same critique on, on your shooting partner, you know, and then you're loading mags while, while they're shooting and, and vice versa. And then, you know, you're able to, with two people, you're able to pull out more steel and put up more targets and things like that, you know? And, um, uh, but yeah, rounds down range, meaningful rounds down range is the way you become a better shooter. Um, you will not be able to see your front sight properly or track your dot properly until you shoot at least 10,000 rounds. And then after that, it's going to take at least another 20,000 rounds to, to make master. <laughs> and so wow. it's just, I'm just telling you, it takes, it takes, it takes, you know, a certain number of, of a time and rounds just to develop skills. There are guys that just pick it up and are, have a natural ability, but at the same time, um, will their natural ability do well over eight, 10, 12 stages? Or are they going to really give it up on one stage to where now you pass them up? You know what I mean? Right. So, um, you know, Max's big, uh, mantra on, you know, that he, uh, he has on his website says consistency and repeatability. So how can I shoot, you know, a 90% on, you know, every stage or 85% on every stage and avoid the, the 100 and then the 35%, you know what I mean? Or, you know, the highs and the lows are, are, are what you want to try to avoid. You want to be able to shoot like a nice even keel match where you don't give up everything that you gain, you know, you gain, you so you push it really hard on and do really awesome, like on four stages, but then you, then you're pushing it on your fifth stage and you totally give it up or you get DQ'd, you know what I mean? Right. And so, yeah. And so you want to be able to consistency and repeatability. So you want to be able to consistently perform at a, at a high level and being able to repeat that. And that comes down to like the individual processes of just drawing, uh, uh you know, of, of making sure your first shots on target, you know, all the, all those, all those things being able to be, you know, being able to do that, you know, every time or almost every time is, is where it's going to pay off the best, you know? So Mike, we're, we're at like the beginning of the season here and uh, you just shot the uh, uh, extreme bolts, Texas three gun championship. You've got a Southwest regional um, three gun nation match coming up here also in Texas. How, how is your season going? And uh, are you happy with the effort that you put in it? Are you seeing rewards from it? Um, yes. Uh, I'm actually definitely happy with um, the way things have gone so far. Uh, I always say you can you can sh you can always shoot better. That's what I say. Um, but at the same time, it, it, you know, it, if you if you're if you're realizing that you are making gains and and, and you're self aware of those gains and and you and you still can see room for improvement, those are always good things. Um, at at the end of uh, last year, after DQing at nationals, uh, I, I backed off and actually put both long guns away. Started shooting just pistol, just USPSA, um, focused on just one gun. Um, decided that I wanted to become super comfortable with my pistol so that I wasn't um, thinking I need to develop more pistol skills, you know, moving into the end of 2016 that I, what I wanted to do was, of course, you know, I wanted to always be learning, but I wanted to feel really comfortable with my pistol. Um, so, and then, you know, my first major uh, of, uh, of the year was, uh, it wasn't quite a major, but it was a, uh, a regional match was a all pistol USPSA match and was able to get high A class there. Um, I shot my highest percentage of, of the overall, uh, you know, and so that was that to me, you know, that was something to hang my hat on. I was happy about that, you know, and then, then, you know, only three weeks later, I guess it was, was uh, the Mossberg, uh, the shooter source Mossberg shotgun challenge, which was in um, uh, Jeremy Moore put on in Crescent in North Texas. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was actually able to take one of our distant arms, Vepper 12s, and, and, and get my first high overall in a major. Um, it was a one gun shotgun match, but you know, I, I won, you know, 100. The nearest guy was at 93%, you know. So, you know, I was pretty happy with the way I shot at that match. And it, it was a really tough match, too. I, I picked up my first penalty, it was 10 seconds for one plate, right? I realized after looking at the rest of the penalties for the match that the, and how far the targets were and how tight I was going to have to choke on each stage that it was really about being able to be consistent through the match, to not give up penalties, to not give away that stage to where somebody would just blow by me because I'm my own worst enemy, you know? So I just dialed it back, you know, and shot my game. Um, 
I, I, I was able to get a few stage wins and, and was really happy with my performance. I was able to, you know, put one of our guns on, you know, at, at the top of the table, you know, so I was really happy about that. And, uh, and then moving into the Texas three gun championship, um, Kurt Gruber's match. Uh, I, I, you know, I got second place there last year, but at the same time, that was my high point last year. And then I, I, I really went down from there. Um, open divisions, one of those um, divisions that depending on who shows up, that who's there, your competition could go from, you know, being, you know, not too bad to being extremely tough. Um, there's been a lot of movement into open division this year. And so uh, Jacob Betsworth, you know, can't can move over to open division and uh, yeah. Hunter, Hunter's been shooting really well. And so there was actually some really tough competition at, uh, uh, you know, Josh Loganville, the, the, the tooth and nail guys. Um you know, so there was actually some really tough competition and I, I got fifth place. Um, it was just by, you know, third place was just a percent or two away. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, Jacob came, came in and just crushed it, did really well. Jerry, Jerry had a mistake or two and, and, and was, that was enough for, for, uh, Bettsworth to get his, get his win, get his high overall. Um, but, uh, you know, I shot my first, um, uh, 87%, I think it was of the high overall. Uh, you know, of a legitimate, true high overall uh, of a three gun match, and so you know, uh, in, you know, in in the way USPSA would work, that would be a master score against the high overall, right? And so for me, that's something I hang my I was able to hang my hat on. I was happy about shooting, shooting that well. You know, I, I gave up, gave up, you know, fifteen seconds and penalties on, on you know like a sporting clay stage, you know. And so if it wasn't for that stage, I would have easily had you know had my third place, no problem. So. You know, I'm realizing that, well, guess what? I didn't work on aerial plays, you know what I mean? Especially at 30, yeah. miles, an, 30 miles an hour, you know, with the red dot, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I shot all the other things that I that I trained on that I was, you know, that I did well on. I did really well. You know, I shot my pistol solid. My shotgun was definitely there. My slugs were, were on, you know, but I, I gave it up on those aerial plays. And um, where else did I struggle? Um this is one or two spots, you know what I mean? But that's all it takes when you start, when you start pushing up to a high level, you know, one or two little mistakes or, or, or little, you know, opening the door for somebody, you know, somebody will walk through that door on you, you know? And so, um, of course I wanted to, uh, to do a little bit better. Uh, I was able to do top five and I got a really awesome belt buckle that, uh, freedom munitions and, and extreme bullets were, were generous enough to, to donate to the match. And, uh, yeah. Those things are sweet. It was, they were really awesome. And, um, Last year, uh, Rudy Zaruba and Jansen Jones, um, you know, both of Freedom Munitions, they, they both had said, you know, that they were, that they loved supporting the match and they wanted to continue to do so. And Jansen had made the comment that he really wanted to have some trophies to make this match not only a great match, but a great match, you know, on the price table and trophy wise and things like that. And so, uh, he really came through with the belt buckles. I, I thought for my fifth place one that I was going to get like a girl size, you know what I mean? But I still, I still got the full Texas size belt buckle and I was, you know, uh, really happy about that. And, you know, I mean, the sponsors of that match were really great last year and this year. And, um, you know, it's, it's really amazing, you know, as being a company, you know, we get approached for to sponsor matches and sponsor shooters. And, you know, we're tiny. I mean, we're, we're not even a speck on the map as far as the actual revenue is concerned. But, you know, we try to do what we can. And, and, the, and the, the, the companies that, that do sponsor, you know, it's amazing, at, you know, what they do because um, because, you know, you know, that, that, that is, that is, you know, that's, that's got to come from somewhere that doesn't just come from, from, from a magical, magical, you know, uh, you know, magical munch building stuff. You know what I mean? Right. They actually have to have to produce those things. Somebody has got to turn a profit to make those things possible, you know? And so, uh, I really, uh, really think it's important for, um, shooters to, uh, to, to try to give back to those sponsors as much as possible and things like that, you know, at minimum, you should thank them on on the, on social media minimum. Yeah, for sure. And it, it is cool to see, uh, you know, all the, the belt buckles and everything and the pictures that result from these matches. And I think, you know, with the access of everyone having a, a camera on their phone, it, it is becoming a lot more prevalent that sponsors are getting thanked. And, and, uh, hopefully the, the appreciation that us shooters have is, uh, is coming through. So yeah, I, I, I hear you there and I totally feel that. And Mike, you know, I'm, I'm pumped that you're having such a great season here, man. I'm, I'm glad that you, uh, you know, took the, 
the the lumps from 2015 and reevaluated and uh, and are moving forward. That's really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely looking forward to a to a great year. Um, there's a lot of matches still on the schedule. Like you said, it is kind of the beginning of the season. It is the fourth month. Um, I, I skipped out on a few early matches this year that I did do last year, but I felt like I said I, I started out early and just just kind of pushed through the year. I'm trying to uh, be a little bit more calculate uh, calculating on 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 uh, what matches I attend. Uh, we're still doing a ridiculous number of majors. Um, you know, uh, uh, land and ice match fees are over four thousand dollars a piece. So wow. just to let you know, that's how many how many matches we we're out there shooting. Um, you know, we're 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 getting our our sponsors a lot of good exposure, and that, and that's we've been really happy about that. Um, this year, we actually um, have a new rifle sponsor, uh, Combat Shooters out of Tennessee. Uh, we'll hopefully let everybody know about them real soon. Um, we're extreme bull extreme bullets is back with us again this year for team dissident arms. Um, they were, you know, huge help last year. Um, we've been shooting extreme bullets from the very beginning and, uh, extreme slugs also, um, they should have some low recoil ones coming out and we're real excited about extreme bullets coming back for us big this year. Um, we have, a, a another really big sponsor, um, that people know them as the choke guys, at least in three gun and it's Riley, yeah. Riley manufacturing. And they, um, they make a lot more than in chokes. And, and, and again, we're going to be rolling out um, a lot of information about them soon. They, they're wanting to really make a, a big splash in the three gun market, um, three gun specific, um, specific products. And um, you'd be really surprised at how many different things that uh, Briley does. And, and we're hoping to, to be able to uh, tell people about those real soon. And then um, uh, we have a company called Capital Cartridge that's come on with us this year. Um, they supply our brass. So anybody that uh, all the way from the from the uh, casual reloader to if you have a reloading company, Capital Cartridge is your place to get brass. Um, they cannot be beat on their prices. So it's just, it's the way to go if you're going to buy in volume for sure. And uh, uh, rounding out the sponsors just to get to get through them here is uh, we of course have our uh, two local ranges side Shiloh shooting and uh, at the CCC complex and then uh, Max Michelle Training Academy. And uh, and the shooter source, um, Jeremy Moore, the shooter source. I mean, if you need just your you know your three gun items, things like that. There's no better guy. Support guys that support the support the sport. It's definitely definitely the way to do things. Yeah, and those are all names that you hear you know again and again at the uh, you know the sponsor table and stuff like that. So they're definitely uh, you know people that are supporting the the sports. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely you. You want to, you want to, you want to make it a big happy family. You know, I mean, you, there's always, there's always some guy out there doing something that you can definitely go and buy their product and all that. But at the same time, you know, uh, whenever you go to that next match or that next prize table, you need to really be thinking about, you know, the, the, the people that are supporting the sport are the ones that we need to be focusing, you know, our, uh, our hard earned money on. Yeah, for sure. Well, Mike, uh, you know, we've been talking for quite a while here, and. Uh, it's, it's because you, you're up to so much. And uh, I always ask like this wrap up question for, um, for my guests. And I think you're going to have like a unique perspective because you're so close to the sport with, uh, you know, the manufacturing end, being a competitor as well as a match director. Um, where do you see the sport of three gun headed? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, I've had some different conversations with, uh, you know, different, different shooters, different business owners. Um, guys that, you know, have been around longer than I have. And, and, you know, I mean, you know, these are guys that remember the, um, the SOF matches and then, um, you know, they remember the different man on man shoot offs and, and things like that. And so there's definitely going to be some, an evolution in the game. I mean, there already is, there already has been since I've been around. Um, what I'm noticing is that there are significantly more matches, major matches that are out there than whenever I started. Um, that, even with as, as fast as a growing sport as three gun is, that's going to dilute um, maybe not the, 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 the shooter so much is because the shooters are this uh, growing, growing field, but the, um, the manufacturers and the companies themselves, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be a lag behind the, the, the shooter. So we have to have shooters that need product to have new companies to have the products for them. And so, with, with a lot of new matches, um, shooters are going to pick and choose. So to me, if there's a whole bunch of matches in your backyard, in your, in your region, then why are you going to fly West Coast, fly East Coast? Or 
Or if you're East Coast and you got matches, you know, all in these different states, all within driving distance, then you're less likely to fly West Coast. And then, and then for instance, and then also on another side of that is um, if the local matches are really getting good, then, you know, are you going to spend that money to go to a regional match, you know? So there's lots of different levels to look at on it. And I can't say that I have like this exact idea of where it's going to go. I think that it's going to be a little bit tougher for um, big matches to have these killer price tables. So the, the people are going to pick and choose with their dollar. And so they're either going to not like a match as much. And so they're going to decide not to go back somewhere. So whether it was the courses of fire or um, the way it was run or anything like that, you know, so you, you're going to make choices. Um, and then, and then they're also, if, if the economy struggling and things like that, you know, the price tables may potentially be smaller. So for me, it's not necessarily the price table that drives things, but at the same time, you have to, you do realize that there are, you know, that there is, you know, that is a factor. And so um, I, I think that some of these matches where they may potentially roll uh, match fee money back into price table money is a ways, way to go. Um, and um, I think there are other ways of, of being able to draw top shooters to a match and still have a price table that like most shooters would be happy with and potentially having it to where you have cash payouts to keep the, the top guys and the middle guys, you know, want, wanting to come shoot the match, you know, there, there's only going to be so much product and gear that manufacturers can, can put out in, in, in any given year. And, and, I, and the more that the, you know, that our nation, you know, as a whole is buying, the more they're going to be able to do. And, and it's not, it's not that, that, that these manufacturers are, are putting it out there so that the three gun, so that they, the three gunner sees that and the three gunner is going to buy their product because the three gun community is, is very, very, very small as far as total numbers. Yeah, that's but, for sure. But the exposure of three gun is very large. So somebody that, you know, like people that know me, they think I'm a professional shooter. I'm not a professional shooter. I have a day job. You know what I mean? I, I photograph houses so I can go shoot. You know what I mean? And so, but at the same time, I'm becoming a sponsor shooter. So like their idea of like what they see is they're, they're exposed to it. So they see all these things. Well, they're going to ask about rifles. They're going to ask about gear. They're going to ask about that. Or like on TV, when somebody sees, you know, Lena, you know, outside of shooting and she's wearing her SIG shirt or whatever like that, well, they may go buy a SIG. You know what I mean? So it's that it's that big umbrella that three gun really cast. That, that that manufacturers are drawn to it as far as wanting to sponsor it or wanting to be on a shooter shirt or things like that. Or maybe the the, the owner is into, into uh, competitive shooting or things like that. But it's not that I don't personally, I don't think that they're thinking that everybody from the match is now going to go and buy their rifle. But at the overall, their overall exposure of getting getting their product out there is the benefit to them, you know, and, right. and you know, and buying, buying space in magazines and, uh, and commercials is extremely expensive. So, you know, well, and you don't get that one-to-one -one conversation that you do, um, right. you know, of someone, you know, say like a rifle sponsor sponsoring a shooter, they're going to have like one-on-one -on -one conversations with hundreds of people over the entire season. Correct. Whereas and, like and, just yeah. background noise when it's on the television. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. And, and, you know, we get approached to sponsor some matches and, and we have, and we sponsored task force dagger, you know, task force dagger two. Um, we sponsored the Texas three gun championship last year and we sponsored the Chris Kyle match last year, but we realized as an extremely small company that we, we can't, we, we can't do that because for us, it's basically literally like taking a month's worth of work and, and just saying, okay, we did that for free. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, that those, you know, two of them were charity matches. And so we absolutely, you know, felt like that that was a good thing to do. And so we had no problem with that, but, you know, looking at, at like how are we going to stretch our sponsorship dollar? How do we get the exposure that we, that we need as a company to make this company worth it? Otherwise it's, if it's not worth it, why are we going to do it? Right. And so, you know, looking at this year, you know, we really felt like having, having a shooter that really believed in our product that was out there shooting it at a high level, that was going to get going to be doing it, you know, nationally and locally and, and people already respected. So, I mean, it was like, a it was perfect for, you know, falling in with Kalani and Hunter this year. Yeah. I don't um, know if you could have yeah. picked two better guys either, you know? Yeah. Honestly, they're really great guys. And, um, you know, they both approached us in the right way. And, and it was, that was extremely, 
you know, that brought them a long way with, with me, you know, as, and, and with our company is, is because, you know, I, whenever I went out as a shooter to start shooting stuff, I just went and bought what I needed to buy to become the shooter that I felt like I needed to do. If people were able, able and wanted to help me, then awesome. Let's do this. Let's form a partnership. If not, I'm going to buy your product anyway. You know what I mean? And because it's the best or it's the most affordable or whatever. Right. So that approach is going to get you a long way whenever you're trying to develop relationships with people. Um, sending a, a, a company an email saying, what kind of free shit can you give me? is not going to get you anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that's so, a very good point. I yeah. I would uh, delete that, you know, with great haste. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, and so uh, so it, it, it it's about relationship building. So it, nothing's easy in life. You know, I learned that more and more as I get older. Um, and, and and so you know, putting in the time, putting in the uh, the effort and the money, and, and doing things in the right way, not being an asshole along the way. <laughs> you know, will, 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 will pay off, you know, it really will. Well, Mike, those are, uh, those are great thoughts and you've given so much, you know, great information to the audience already. If you could leave the, uh, the audience listening with one thought or one piece of advice, what would it be? Man, just rounds down range, meaningful rounds down range will, will, will allow you to become the shooter you envision yourself becoming. That is a great final thought. Mike, this has been a lot of fun, man. I really enjoyed talking to you here. I love what this, uh, what you're up to with uh, Dissident Arms and how you're looking at your game and uh, also putting on great matches for other people. So thanks, man. Thanks for being on the show. Absolutely, Dave. I really appreciate the opportunity, and I will absolutely keep you filled in on all the new stuff that Dissident Arms and our sponsors will be uh, doing this year and in the near future. Excellent. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Mike Whitesides. You can tell Mike is passionate about 3-Gun, and I love how motivated he is to improve his game and the game of the shooters at Dissident Arms multi-gun matches. And Mike is lucky to have such a motivated shooting partner and business partner in Lan Wynn. If you are in the Houston area or even anywhere near there, you have to check out one of their matches. They sound amazing, and uh, I would love to check one out myself in the future. Take note of how these gentlemen have structured their matches and practices if you want to achieve a high level in 3-Gun as well. Again, selected links, including pictures of the awesome shotguns Mike and Lan at Dissident are putting together, can be found on the website at 3gunshow.com slash episode 70. And don't forget to sign up for the April giveaway of the MGM Target Switch View. Check it out at 3gunshow.com slash MGM. And when you make a purchase at MGM Targets, you can save 10% using the code DHMGM10. You can also support the 3 Gun Show podcast by using our affiliate link when you shop at Brownells. Just go to 3gunshow.com slash Brownells and shop like normal. If you like this show, do me a favor and, uh, and tell a friend. Thank you so much for downloading, listening, and subscribing to the show. I'm Dave Hartman, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Unload show clear.